Did you know you will probably come across at least 36 serial killers in your lifetime? This might seem like a stretch, but it's not as ridiculous as it sounds. Serial killers don't have a strict profile, so it's hard to tell who's who. Movies often portray them as middle-aged men or seductive black widows. In real life, however, serial killers rarely fit into these stereotypes. Just like their victims, serial killers can come from different backgrounds, genders, and age groups. Some of their motives and methods, however, do overlap. If you're curious to learn more about infamous serial killers and their crimes, then keep on watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more neat facts to discover the world one click at a time. Number 1. Spree killers and serial killers are two different things. While people often confuse these two terms, the FBI is quite particular in classifying these criminals. A spree killer refers to a criminal who commits several murders in several locations without a break or cooling off period. A serial killer, on the other hand, is a criminal who commits several murders with a hiatus in between their crimes. This hiatus can last between a few months or even years. Number 2. Around 70% of known serial killers are from the United States. Among the 70% are seven of the most notorious serial killers all over the world. Unfortunately, despite this large percentage, around 222,000 serial killer murders in the US remain unsolved. Number 3. California ranks first with the highest number of serial killer killings in the US. The state of California has a record of 1,682 serial killer murders. This is the highest number in the US, with Texas ranking second with a record of at least 893. Number 4. There are four types of serial killers. Mission-oriented, hedonistic, visionary, and control-oriented. These are categories based on a serial killer's motive. First, mission-oriented serial killers are those who kill to fulfill a mission. An example of this is a serial killer who kills only prostitutes because they believe it is their mission. Second, a hedonistic serial killer is a killer who finds pleasure in killing. To them, killing is fun and entertaining. Third, visionary serial killers claim they were called upon by the devil, god, or other divine beings to kill others. Lastly, the control-oriented serial killer murders others because they seek to control other people. They feel powerless and insecure, so they kill other people to feel otherwise. Number 5. Most people believe serial killers are the misfits of society. While there are recorded cases of serial killers who are misfits in their communities, research shows most serial killers are not. In fact, most serial killers who have been arrested were normal, with families and homes. Number 6. Most serial killers start with killing animals first before humans. Before they target human victims, most serial killers will experiment with smaller animals first. Research shows most convicted serial killers start with torturing animals and then killing them. When they find this act pleasurable or fulfilling, they move on to bigger prey. Number 7. One of the most notorious serial killers ever is Ted Bundy. The 2019 Netflix documentary, Conversations with a Killer, The Ted Bundy Tapes, features the notorious serial killer Ted Bundy and his crimes. Ted Bundy was a serial killer from the 1970s, and he killed women all over Washington, Colorado, Florida, and Utah. Authorities are unsure of the exact number of his victims, but Ted Bundy has killed at least 36 women. After several arrests and convictions, Ted Bundy was finally sentenced to death. On January 24, 1989, he was executed via electric chair. Number 8. One serial killer claimed a possessed dog told him to kill people. In the 1970s, David Berkowitz was arrested for the murder of six people. In his trial, he claimed his neighbor's dog was possessed by spirit and that this spirit commanded him to murder them. Despite this claim, Berkowitz later pleaded guilty, and he was sentenced to two years for every victim he killed. Number 9. John Wayne Gacy was a party clown who lured innocent people into his home. John Wayne Gacy was a construction company owner 
who also worked as a party clown on the side. Dressed as a clown, he lured his victims, often young boys and men, into his home. He was arrested on December 21, 1978, after the police found the remains of his victim in his crawlspace. It wasn't until 16 years after that he was finally convicted and sentenced to death by lethal injection. Number 10. Bell Guinness, on the other hand, was a serial killer who used marriage to lure in victims. After moving from Norway to Chicago, Bell Guinness married a fellow immigrant who later died mysteriously. Thanks to several insurance policies, Guinness received enough money to purchase a farm. She later put up advertisements in newspapers calling for prospective husbands. Those who showed interest and visited her on her farm were never heard from again. Number 11. The Grim Sleeper is the nickname of a serial killer in Los Angeles. Looney David Franklin Jr. was a serial killer who targeted the prostitutes and drug addicts of downtown Los Angeles. His nickname Grim Sleeper is because he had a cooling off period or sleep for at least a decade. He began killing in the 1980s, took a break and then resumed some time before the 2000s. On July 7, 2010, Franklin was finally arrested by officials after his DNA was linked to the victim's bodies. He received a death sentence in 2016, but he died in prison before he could be executed. Number 12. Another serial killer was called the Night Stalker because of his methods. In the 1980s, Richard Ramirez targeted victims who left their windows and doors unlocked. At night, he would stalk his neighborhood in California and kill women in their homes if there were any unlocked entryways. He murdered at least 13 people, with his victims ranging from 9 to 83 years old. On August 31, 1985, an angry mob of Los Angeles citizens captured him, and this led to his arrest. Number 13. The Green River Serial Killer is an infamous serial killer from the 1980s. Gary Leon Ridgway was a serial killer active from the 1980s to the 1990s. He targeted prostitutes and runaways and after killing them, he would dump the victims' bodies in the Green River. Because of this, people dubbed him the Green River Serial Killer. After his arrest in 2001, Ridgway pleaded guilty and confessed to the murder of 28 victims. He was sentenced to life imprisonment at the Washington State Penitentiary. Number 14. The Butcher of Plainfield was a serial killer who skinned the body of his victims. Known as the Butcher of Plainfield, Ed Gain is an infamous serial killer who skinned the bodies of his victims. In November 1957, police discovered trophies and keepsakes made from human body parts in Gaines's farmhouse. They also discovered the gutted and headless body of a woman. The judge deemed Gain mentally unfit, so he was sent to a mental hospital in Wisconsin instead of prison. Number 15. The killer from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was based on Ed Gain. The famous slasher film Texas Chainsaw Massacre features Leatherface, a murderer who wears a mask made from human skin. Leatherface skins people alive, tortures his victims to death, and uses their skin to make furniture. While the film's plot is fictional, Leatherface is based on how Ed Gain also made trophies from his own victims. Number 16. As his nickname suggests, El Comehente, or the People Eater, is a serial killer who ate his victims. Durahangal Vargas is the El Comehente, or the People Eater, and he killed and ate at least 10 people. In the same way people have favorite foods, Vargas also had preferences for his victims. He preferred eating slim and lean men because he believed eating fat people was unhealthy. He also didn't like eating women, as men apparently tasted better. Number 17. Jeffrey Dahmer was another serial killer who ate the body parts of his victims. From the 1970s to the 1990s, Jeffrey Dahmer killed his victims by luring them from public places to his home. He would wrap them in chains, sedate them, and strangle them to death. After, he would eat some of his victims' body parts while the remains rotted in his apartment. In 1991, one of his victims escaped, and this finally led to Dahmer's arrest. Number 18. The pig farmer serial killer didn't eat his victims, but he might have made other people eat them instead. The pig farmer serial killer refers to Robert Picton, a farmer from Canada. 
Picton disposed of the bodies of his victims by putting them through the same meat processor he used to make ground pork. While he didn't eat them himself, authorities believe his customers might have eaten some of his victims' body parts. Since he used the same processor, it is likely remains of the victims' bodies were stuck onto the machine while he processed meat for his business. Number 19. Not all serial killers limit their targets to just one city or place. Research shows that most serial killers prefer to stick to one place, and they rarely switch from one area to another when they kill people. Samuel Little, however, is not like most killers. He was a nomadic serial killer who traveled around the US while killing people in different places, including Arkansas, Georgia, Texas, Florida, and many more. Number 20. Randy Stephen Kraft was a serial killer who documented his murders in a journal. On May 14, 1983, Randy Stephen Kraft was arrested by police after they found a dead body in his passenger seat. The police also found a journal in his briefcase that detailed the murder of at least 60 people. From the 1970s to the 1980s, Kraft terrorized the streets of Michigan, California, and Oregon. He picked up young hitchhikers and killed them. Number 21. Most serial killers target vulnerable people. Anthony Saul is an example. He killed homeless women or those who were drug addicts. These women were incredibly vulnerable, and he took advantage of that by inviting them over with promises of food. He strangled and buried the victims inside his property, which authorities later found out after he was arrested for sexual assault in 2009. Number 22. Chester Dwayne Turner was a serial killer who specifically targeted drug users. Despite being a husband and a father to four kids, Chester Dwayne Turner was on a spree of killing drug users in Los Angeles. This occurred between the 1980s and the 1990s. Before he was arrested, however, another man, David Allen Jones, was falsely charged with his crime. It wasn't until authorities found Turner's DNA at the crime scene that Jones was released. Number 23. A serial killer once received a 200-year sentence. Unemployed and living with his mother, Joel Rifkin was a serial killer in New York during the 1990s. He would pick up prostitutes from the street and kill them by strangling them. He was arrested in 1993 after the police found a dead woman in the trunk of his car. His attorneys tried to negotiate a lighter sentence by claiming he suffered from a mental illness, but Rifkin had already confessed to murdering 17 women. He was then sentenced to 200 years in prison. Number 24. Robert Lee Yates was another serial killer who targeted vulnerable women. Robert Lee Yates was a member of the United States Army, and he also served in the Army National Guard for three years before he was arrested in 2000. Unknown to his peers, he was secretly killing prostitutes from the 1970s to the 1990s. He was finally arrested in 2000 after police found blood in his car. Number 25. There was once a serial killer who had a sticker on his car saying he kills. Pee Wee Gaskins drove around town with a sticker on his bumper that said he was hauling dead bodies in his truck. When curious onlookers asked him about it, he told them he was driving around corpses to bury in the cemetery. Number 26. Even devout churchgoers could secretly be serial killers. Dennis Rader was a husband, father, and devout churchgoer. He was the last person people suspected to be the notorious BTK killer in Kansas. But looks can certainly be deceiving. BTK stood for bind, torture, kill. And that's exactly what Dennis Rader did to at least 10 people before his arrest. Number 27. Despite his oath to serve and protect, police officer Joseph James D'Angelo was a convicted serial killer. Joseph James D'Angelo served as a police officer from 1973 to 1979, when he was arrested for shoplifting and later fired. His crimes didn't stop there, as he committed rape, murder, and assault from the 1970s to the early 1980s. He was finally arrested in 2018 after detectives traced back DNA samples in his car and trash. Number 28. One of the most prolific serial killers ever was a doctor. Like police officers, doctors pledge to protect human life. Dr. Harold Shipman, however, broke this pledge. This British doctor killed over 250 people, 
aged 40 to 93. Unfortunately, the victims and their families never met justice, because Shipman hung himself before he was sentenced. Number 29. H. H. Holmes was a serial killer who had his own murder castle. H. H. Holmes built a three-story murder castle with rooms designed for killing. The rooms had soundproofing paddings, trap doors, and gas lines. He lured men into his home and tortured them according to his own design. Number 30. One serial killer won a live game show during his killing spree. Convicted serial killer Rodney James Alcala took part in the game show The Dating Game, and even won. This was during the time he was on a killing spree, where he killed at least five women from the late 1970s to the 1980s. Horror films like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre are certainly terrifying, but nothing comes close to real-life serial killers. Learning about these criminals, however, is important. Understanding them is a step closer to preventing more crimes in the future. A future where people can live in peace, harmony, and safety. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more facts videos.